and you have it backwards, so you can <coughs> yeah. flip it around. I was doing that. <laughs> there you go. You still got to figure this out as we go along. Uh, welcome. We are our Facebook uh, live streaming, at least part of uh, the first part of the program, because I'm here, proud to have here in the studio the organizers of the Leaders of the Bay Area Women's March. Uh, Renee McKenna over here. Who, now, do I call you the organizer or the leader of the San Francisco March? Let's go ahead and, and show Renee. They know what I look Hi, like. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so we're calling ourselves Leads. Leads. Okay, mm -hmm. so Renee uh, McKenna, who's the San Francisco lead. Uh, Priya Sen, who is the diversity chair. Carolyn Woodson, who is the Oakland lead. Rally lead. And, uh, and Jenny uh, Bradini, who's the, San, who's the San Jose lead. So, um... We're going to talk during the program uh, about uh, everything that's going on with uh, with the march, what it's about, who's organized, uh, who's involved in it, and how you can can take part if you would like to take part. So um, we'll we'll live stream the first part of this, and then you go turn on your radio. How's that? This way you get us you get us behind the scenes. Ah, and here we go. Too much dancing going on in the studio. <laughs> Hello again, this is Brian Copeland talking everybody Monday through Friday from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. I hope you're having a great Thursday wherever you listen to the voice of KGO. Busy program today coming up at 3 o'clock. We will talk with former Senator, it sounds so weird to say former Senator Barbara Boxer, and then we'll talk to her about her thoughts on her years uh, in the Senate and where uh, women, where Democrats, where the country goes now in the age of Trump. Now, uh, t uh, on Saturday, there are a number of marches and protests that are planned around the country in uh, response to the inauguration of Donald Trump tomorrow. There is the, the Women's March uh, in, uh, in, in Washington, D.C., uh, but there are also Women's Marches here in the Bay Area. So I'm pleased to have here in the studio uh, the leaders of the Bay Area Women's Marches. Uh, we have uh, Renee McKenna, who is the lead for the San Francisco March. We have Priya Sen here, who is the diversity chair. Uh, Jenny Bradanini, who is the San Jose lead. And Carolyn Woodson, who is the Oakland lead. Welcome. It's good to have you all here with us today. Thank you for having Thank us. You for having I want to mention, by the way, too, that we are live streaming right now. If you want to, uh, you've got your phone or you're in front of your laptop, uh, we're at Facebook.com slash KGO Radio, as well as Facebook.com slash B-L-I-A-N-C-O-P-I-E. Facebook. Okay, let's start with... Um, with, uh, first of all, uh, where the marches are taking place. So where is the San Francisco March? What time does it start, and, and it goes from where to where? So the San Francisco March is going to meet on the west side of Civic Center, and we're going to actually have our rally staged between the Asian Art Museum and the San Francisco Public Library backed up on High Street, mm -hmm. and then we expect our people that show up to spill out and cover Larkin Street and then on to Civic Center Plaza. So that's going to start at 3 p.m. tomorrow, and we're going to have, we have a terrific lineup. So it's tomorrow, it's not Saturday. I'm sorry, it's Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. Oh my gosh, <laughs> every day feels like a week. Don't, Saturday. don't show up tomorrow. Don't show up tomorrow. tomorrow. Actually, you'll, there will be other things happening. You'll be marching by yourself. Oh my gosh. So, um, so we're going to start on Saturday mm -hmm. uh, at 3 p.m., and we have a terrific lineup of speakers and performers, a great diversity of cultural and religious and uh, social backgrounds and then so that's from three to five and then okay. at five o'clock we're going to step off for our march down market street mm -hmm. um because the sunset is at five twenty that day we're going to ask people to bring some kind of a safe light source a contained candle an electric candle so it'll be like a candle light it'll be a candle light it's a glow Vigil. stick it'll charge your phone mm -hmm. and we're going to march and process down market street and um, disperse at Justin Herman Plaza. How many are you expecting? So on Facebook, we are upwards of 36,000, wow. but it's growing by one to 5,000 a day. Okay, let's talk to Carolyn. Tell me about yes. the Oakland March. The Oakland March is going to start... Oh, a little closer to the microphone, there, Carolyn. Sorry. The Oakland March is going to start at... Um, oh, dear. I'm so sorry. I'm drawing a blank here. Um, it's going to start at um, um, March... Can you come back to me? I will come back, come back to you. Well, let's go with Jenny in San Jose. Yes. All right, so tell me so tell me about San Jose. I say Jenny in San Jose because you told me you call the show yeah, all the time. I call, yeah, I'm Jenny from San Jose. Okay, look closer to the mic here, Jenny. So San Jose, we are convening at City Hall at 10 a.m. And we will start the march at 11. And we will proceed about a 0.7-mile route and end up at Cesar Chavez Plaza. Mm -hmm. And at Cesar Chavez Plaza, we have a great rally set up. Uh, we have, I think, about 14 speakers now. Mm -hmm. and entertainment we have a woman doing 
performance poem. It's going to be a beautiful day. Okay. And then we're going to convene uh, or commence with that oath. Uh, so people will promise to work legally after that and stand up for their communities. And that will end. Okay. Actually, now, yeah. now, how many are you, are you expecting? That's a good question. I think, you know, it's a little bit, uh, we are, our best guesstimate, Eventbrite right now is showing us about 17,000. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Facebook is, I think last time I checked, was right around 6 and a, 6.5K. Mm -hmm. So it could be duplicates. We don't know. People might be paid with friends. We just know it's going to be powerful and a lot of people. Okay. Well, let's go back to Carolyn. Yeah, ready, yeah, ready I'm to tell so us sorry. Ready to tell us about it. You, know, you know, it's okay. We've all had those moments. What's your name? Uh, <laughs> I, I, we've all, well, trust me, we've all had those moments. So in Oakland, we're going to start at the Madison, at Madison Park, and we're going to go two miles. Uh, up Oak Street to Grand Avenue alongside Lake Merritt, mm -hmm. and we're going to end at Frank Ogawa Plaza, and our rally begins at 1230, 1230, and we go, we're hoping to end by 3, and our crowd right now on Eventbrite is 37,000. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about tens of thousands of people that yes. are going to be involved with this. Now, I've, I've got lots of questions, and, and a lot of the questions that I have have, have come from listeners or people on Facebook about about the reasons behind this. So i got to take care of some business. When I return, I'm going to come uh, to Priya, who's the, the, uh, the diversity chair, and I'm going to ask her the big question that everybody's asking on Facebook who doesn't get it, and that is, why? Why are you marching, and what is it that you hope to accomplish? Brian Copeland here with you today till 4 o'clock with me in the studio. I have the leaders of the Bay Area Women's March. Uh, the marches, I should say, that are taking place uh, on Saturday in Washington, D.C., and several major cities around the country, as well as here in San Francisco, San Jose, and Oakland. If you've got questions uh, regarding the marches or any questions for any of the march leaders here, give us a call. 8080810 is the telephone number. Email kgoradio.com, ryancopeland.com, or you can uh, post on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash B-R-I-A-N-C-O-P-I-E. I am Brian Copeland here with you today till 4, and you're listening to KGO 810. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is tell you who are watching on my Facebook page to go to the KGO Facebook page for the rest of the live stream. Otherwise, just turn on the radio. That's why I said no. Bye. I love everyone so much, so I'm just going to keep moving through it. Okay, so we're Did you click? Did you click post at the end of it? There should be a thing that comes up that says like, "You great, your video is no done. Now hit post." No worries. Oh, let's go to the KGO video. Thank you for helping me. So let me see if I can. How do I share this? Click share. It's right next to underneath edit. Above where you are, in between where you've been. Okay. There you go. So and I can share it to my oh, page. Share my own timeline. Yeah. Yesterday I gave you that in my pajamas. I was in my first call of the morning was 5 a.m. So I actually went to my meeting in my pajamas. We did not know one left Allison's office yesterday until 8.30. There we go. Whoops, that's not so right. how long do we have here, Brian? Are we a few minutes? Um, we'll be back in probably two minutes or so. Okay. Hopefully that works. All right, let's see. I'm going to check on my timeline, and we'll see if it works. <laughs> so where should I be watching you? Okay, my friend said it's not a good. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yes, it is moving. Sure. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so I should mention here, too, those of you who are watching us uh, over Facebook live streaming, if there are any questions that you've got, you can just go ahead and post them there on the feed um, right underneath this video. We'll take a look, and if there's some that are apropos, we will uh, we will discuss here in the studio. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious uh, as to how, how you all got involved. You know, how did you get involved with this? So... I just talk to me. Don't worry about that. Okay, yeah. no worries about that. They're, they're, so, um, they're eavesdropping is kind of how this works. I don't know. Can I tell the story about how it even started in the beginning? I love that story. I tell that story all the time. Go ahead. Do you want me to tell it now? I think you should tell Go it ahead. on the air because okay. it started with one woman, and in, le in just yeah. over two months, we have so now 616 marches worldwide in wow. eight countries. Wow. <laughs> okay, yes, I will have you tell, tell so, the story. Okay. You want okay. me to tell the story? Yeah. 
That's fantastic. International. We are. We have. We have given women. Okay, one minute. We're till we're back. Brian, could you also check on KG0810 if there are any comments? Because I told people to do that on there. There might be some questions or something. Let's see here. This is my favorite part. My favorite part. Yeah. Right, so we got a KGO radio? That's what KGO 810. Send us an email. Facebook.com slash KGO 810. Yep. By the way, this is Lena. Thank you. Lena's doing our Absolutely. And there we go. Ah, oh, here's some questions. No, oh, not a question. Somebody named Jen Just comments. saying why she's okay. Marshall. Okay, here we go. Ryan Copeland here with you till 4 o'clock. Uh, with me here in the studio, the leaders of the Bay Area Women's Marches, uh, Renee McKenna, who is the, uh, the lead for the San Francisco March, uh, Jenny Bradmini, who is the lead for San Jose, Carolyn Woodson, the lead for Oakland, and Priya Sen, who's the diversity chair. 8080810 is the telephone number. Okay, let me come to you, Priya, and a, a lot of folks are asking two questions. Why are you marching? Number one, why, why are women, not just here, but women across the country and around the world marching on Saturday? And what is it that, that you hope to accomplish? Thanks for the question, Brian. I would firstly like to talk a little bit about our mission statement. Uh, the Women's March is a national movement to unify and empower everyone who stands for human rights, civil liberties, and social justice for all. We stand together in solidarity for the protection of our rights, our safety, our health, and our families recognizing that our vibrant and diverse communities are the very strength of our country. Now, this mission statement pretty much sums it up as mm -hmm. to why I'm marching. Being an immigrant from India, you know, civil liberties in India are not the same as it is in the United States. And now, since I became a citizen, I, I just can't be a silent bystander and watch my rights erode. I'm marching for equality. I'm marching for love. I'm marching for peace. I'm marching for everything that I believe that this country stands for and will continue to stand okay, for. Okay, now you say that you, you don't want to sit by and watch your rights erode. Tell me what rights you fear are going to be taken away or, or scaled back. Certainly. I, I believe that LGBT rights will be taken away. A women's rights to choose will be taken away. Um, these are issues that, I very, uh, that I'm very passionate about, and I think that uh, when women come together, they make a really strong statement. Because, mm -hmm. Brian, there's one thing that you have to understand, that you know, women all across the world have uh, a, 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 like a systemic experience of being oppressed. And that's why this march resonates, not just in the United States, it resonates all across the world, because pe women understand what it is to be oppressed, and now they've come together, and mm -hmm. they're saying that this is not going to work for us, you know, hear mm -hmm. our voices. Mm -hmm. This is what we're marching for. What was the, the number that you gave me? Um, uh, we were talking off the air about how many women are involved and how many marches there are around the world. Mm -hmm. What was it, 600 and... 616. 616. Mm -hmm. Worldwide. Worldwide sister marches. Uh, can I tell the story about, go, go ahead. about, about, about how so it started and how it was it's, it's so, so amazing and so powerful. So it started with one woman in Hawaii was on a Facebook group that some people may be familiar with. I think it was like 200,000 people called Can't Sleep Nation. Yeah. The day after the election, she made a post that we should go to D.C. We should go on the 21st and we should march. And another woman was, on, was also on there. They took a conversation offline and they made a Facebook event page. And they thought it would be maybe some of their friends and friends of friends would go to D.C. and they would show up and they would march and it would be this amazing thing. They go to bed. 
by that morning there's twelve thousand people that are showing up in d c now from this facebook event page and they're like really realizing like this is a movement this is powerful by the end of the day it was sixty thousand people so you know the word is getting out that's when i actually happened to find a friend of mine for me to facebook event page and i said i'm gonna go to d c i'm gonna buy a ticket and actually i ended up not obviously i'm gonna Mm -hmm. be involved in the one here and during that time, some other activists got involved, and it became the Women's March on Washington, and then it spiraled into sister marches, and the, all of us connected, and here, and we, here are we are today. Here let, we me, are. let me ask you this question. You say that it started on, on a Facebook page called Pantsuit Nation, and that was a, that was a, a, a page that was in support of Hillary Clinton. Uh, there are uh, lots of people who are saying that all of these marches are the result of people being sore losers. That, that this is about Hillary Clinton losing. So so tell me, is this because Hillary Clinton lost or is this because Donald Trump won? And if it had been, say, Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton and Hillary had lost, do you, would there still be 616 marches on Saturday around the world? So the really great thing about the Women's March and why I'm involved with Sister Nation in San Francisco is that the Women's March is a woman-led march. It's not just about woman issues. It's a woman-led march about human rights issues. And so what the Women's March is about is really about coming together about what we're for. We're a nonpartisan. We aren't against anything. Anybody who cares about human rights and is concerned about the discourse that's been happening over the last year, they're welcome to come. It doesn't matter who you voted for. If you didn't vote. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask you, again, the direct question. You know, is, uh, there are those who are saying that the people, all the people who are marching around the world and, and across the country on Saturday are just being sore losers, and it's because Hillary Clinton lost. So how would you respond to those people? So I think for myself, you know, I'm here because I'm concerned about what's going to happen going forward, and I ask, what can I do? And, you know, individually, after the election, I've had a lot of people have come up to me and said, I spent the day in bed, I was eating chocolate and watching bad TV, I feel depressed, I feel hopeless. And when you gather people together, then they have something to hope for. You know, personally, we have people who voted many different ways who are coming to this Mm -hmm. march. So for me, this is way beyond politics. This is about human rights and the things that really bind us all together. And that is the beauty of the Women's March, is that it's not anti you know i'm a therapist so i work it's important to know what the problem is Mm -hmm. but just addressing the problem doesn't address the solution and so we certainly know that there's a lot of problems coming there's a lot of fear there's a lot of concern but the women's march is about what we're for and gathering together combining all of these individual reasons that people march and looking for the common denominator which is really shared humanity and concern about social justice and equality we got lots of folks who are... Go ahead. Can I add to that? The rhetoric of this past election insulted and dehumanized and threatened a lot of women, Mm -hmm. immigrants, and also people from diverse religious faiths and backgrounds. And I think that that's another reason that people are joining together, not only to heal, but also to begin in their communities to start to to get together and make a difference. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to stop you because I want to go to the phones. Okay. we got lots of folks online that want to talk with you. So uh, let's, uh, we'll kick this conversation off. We'll talk to Bradley in San Jose. Hey, Bradley, you're on KGO with Brian Copeland and the leaders of the Bay Area Women's Marches. I don't think that I said that. that that's to, I think you mis I think you misheard. I, th- I said tomorrow I'm doing an anti uh, inauguration show. Uh, I did not say this was a protest against Donald Trump. Well, if I if if I if if I did if I did I misspoke.
Bradley, is there a question here? Or what, what, what is your question? I have a comment for him. I mean, I have a comment having survived on the tank. All right, with that, Bradley, I'm going to have to let you go because we're up against the clock. So we'll take care of some business. Can you can you stay a little bit longer? And then I will let sure. you, uh, we'll, we'll take care of business. We'll come back and then you can answer uh, answer Bradley's question. He wants to know where uh, you got the idea that Donald Trump or anybody else was going to take away women's rights or LGBT rights. Uh, Brian Copeland here with me today to four o'clock with me in the studio, the leaders of the Bay Area Women's Marches. Uh, Renee McKenna, who is the lead for the San Francisco March on Saturday. Jenny Bradanini, who is the lead for the San Jose March. Carolyn Woodson, the lead for the Oakland March. And Priya Sen, who is the diversity chair. 808-0810 is the telephone number. I'm Brian Copeland here with you till four. You're listening to KGOA 10. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let's let's, 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 let's save that for on the air. Okay. Uh, okay. I, okay. I have to do this here. Well, I'm gonna have you stop and, and have you save that for for on the air. Okay. Have you seen your? Have you seen your answer All you gotta do is look at the cabinet picks. Yes. You guys don't get it all for nothing. You gotta look at the cabinet okay. picks. And I know. Okay. Okay. Well, we will. Uh, well, let's not, when we, let's we, not get into power. Let me come back. Yeah. When we come back, we'll do that. I've got a contest I've got to do here. Okay. Just give me a second, ladies. I gotta do this. <laughs> and KGOA 10 is your shot to win a $25 gift card to check out the newly opened Urban Tavern located inside the Hilton San Francisco in Union Square. And you'll qualify for a trip or two to Barcelo, Puerto Vallarta in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We'll take caller number 10. Caller 10 right now on the KGO contest line, which is 415-995-6810. Again, that number is 415-995-6810. Caller 10 will win the gift card and qualify for the trip to Mexico. Now, you got to be 21 or older to win. Get official contest rules at kgoradio.com. Prize is furnished by our friends at Apple Vacations and Barcelo Hotels and Resorts and Urban Tavern. And good luck to your friends here at KGOA 10. Okay, so we've got a few minutes because we're going to go on to a news break. But when we come back, we'll start with that. And there's some mm -hmm. folks that have some questions for you online. I bet, yours, um, I bet your post has some questions on it, too. Back yeah, on your I'm page. Looking, I'm taking a look at that right now. Um, and, uh, we will... If you just switch tabs up here, then you'll... Oh, okay. I'm on the wrong page. Okay. I can just do that, right? Yeah, that works, too. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I've never done it where I've, where I've tabbed it before. Uh, okay. Well, let's do this. Um, okay, so I'd I like to know what everybody does. You know, so, so you are, you're a therapist, do you say? What, what, what MFT? Um, no, I practice as a hypnotherapist. Oh, a hypnotherapist, yeah, really? Hypnotherapist. Mm -hmm. okay, I have to get your card. I got it with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I, I have to get no, your card. No, I got it with me. Yeah, no, it's great work. Okay. Priya, what do you do? I'm studying for my GRE. I'm going to go back to get my master's. Awesome. In what? Uh, occupational therapy. Occupational therapy. Yeah. Oh, it's all about helping people here today. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's Okay, it. Carolyn? I work with them. I'm going to watch a little, little, little bit louder. A little bit louder. I, am, I, I work with women who've also lost their life has happened and gotten off them. Mm -hmm. And connect me so they can. Oh, that's all? Okay, and Jenny, when you're not calling me? Uh, we're not <laughs> <laughs> Teenagers and all that that entails, but I work for a company called Draco Natural Products, and we make ingredients for dietary supplements. And so they were kind enough to give me a leave of absence to run this thing for seven weeks. We're planning something in seven weeks that probably should take six months to make sure it's planned. Wow. But it is all day, every day, 24/7. Well, it's funny you say you see you've got your mom and two teenagers, so actually organizing this march is really like a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Girls or boys? I'm 20 weeks. So yeah. Oh, how yeah. old? Right now, 14 to 17. Oh, oh yeah, my, my son says, Mommy, when's this thing going to be over? <laughs> <laughs> when is this? I 
Do I have another I meeting? Have when is this going to be over? Right <laughs> <laughs> Mom is saving the world. Mom is saving the world, along with uh, what sixty-five thousand other people on yeah. Saturday. Okay, now who's got? You have a daughter. Who's got daughters here? Okay, are, are, are your daughters all? Are they marching? My daughter's marching in D.C. Oh, great! Oh, she wow. lives in New York and is in China. She's going to D.C. Is there a march in D.C.? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 In L.A. Oh, yeah. 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 There's one in every major city, mm -hmm. every major metropolitan area. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and your definitely. daughter marching? My daughter's coming. Yep. Okay. And yours, what is she? My family is trying to make it work. They're both softball and baseball players. And of course, they're in the Pittsburgh okay. area. So I, I don't want it to rain for the march, but if it rains, then the kids have to have their games. <laughs> if it rains, so we're going to do our best to try to be in uh, three places at one time. I remember those. I remember those Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> I was single dad of three, and you got one that's got basketball, oh, yeah, one that's got baseball, one that's got a piano lesson. And, and of course, not near each other they're not near each other, and they're all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yeah. So I've, I've, so I've seen this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I starred in this movie for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I'm, I'm I'm curious too about about male participation. I was reading an article about how it seems that men, where where is that they support. The goals of the marches um, are are slow to to uh, you know actually be vocal about it and to participate. Are are you seeing male participation? Oh, absolutely. We have we have some very strong male participants on our lead team. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that have been great. Speakers who are males that are going to be speaking in Oakland. Would be thought leaders. I'm sorry. In Oakland, we have Next Gen's uh, CEO and chairman oh, wow. John Steyer, and he's going to be speaking on climate change. Yeah, we have five speakers uh, in San Jose that are male. I'm marching. I just haven't decided where I'm going to march at. If Oakland, be come on. San you can do two. <laughs> you can do two. Well, actually, I'm going to be over here. The plan is that just I'm going to be so over here doing some stuff on, on, on Saturday. And, and, yeah. <laughs> well, I live in San Leandro, well, so I'm next door. Oakland's actually the closest. You can march with San Jose. You can go to Oakland's rally, and you can... Do the finale in San Francisco. We got it all set up. Set up. Set up. Set up. We'll give you a VIP. We'll give free t-shirts. So if you want to be in the city of Oakland, come on. We'll have you. We start at 12 o'clock. Come on. Yeah, I think I've got a thing I've got to do here from about noon to 2, I think, or 11 to 2. So you'll miss us. Oh, let me see. Are we back? Give me a second. Are we back? We're back now? Oh. Okay. We have to go. Who just died? Who she talking about? Just died. Stephanie Rutter scattered showers today. Another moderate system, much like the one we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up in Saturday, another day of scattered. I'm sorry. The winner was Becky Ware. Brian Copeland here with you today till 4 o'clock. 8080810 is our telephone number. Congratulations to Becky in Foster City. Uh, she won our gift certificate, or I should say our gift card, uh, to check out Urban Tavern located in the Hilton San Francisco Union Square. And she also qualifies for the trip to Chew the Print to buy Arta. We will have uh, more gift cards to give away, and you will have your opportunity to qualify for that trip. Just keep it tuned right here to KGO 810. On the Saturday, the day after the inauguration, there are, at last count, 616 women's marches uh, across the country and around the world. And I have here in the studio the leaders of the Bay Area women's marches, uh, Renee McKenna, who's the lead for San Francisco, uh, Jenny Bradnini, the lead for San Jose, Carolyn Woodson, who's the lead for Oakland, and Priya Sen, who is the diversity chair. We're also streaming, by the way, uh, over Facebook, Facebook Live. If you want to go to KGO Radio's Facebook page, facebook.com slash KGO810, you can watch it. Now, we had a, a call, I believe it was Bradley, before we went to the break, who wanted to know why you think that, uh, that Donald Trump or anyone is going to take away women's rights or take away the rights of LGBT people. So I think you wanted to answer well, that. Well, I, I want to back up a little bit first because this isn't about Donald Trump. This isn't about because he won. Maybe it's at a more frantic pace because he won, but this needed to happen no matter who was won. We needed to come together as a community and move forward for change. We need to stand with each other 
and say, hey, I got your back, you got my back, and mm -hmm. listen to each other's narratives and missions and move forward as one community. The power in numbers. Our message is we're too big to be ignored. Look at us. Look at how many there is are of us. So I think from the callers calling in and addressing that question, this is not it, this is bigger than Trump. Okay, this so so let's let's get to the other part of his question then, and that is again he asks why you're afraid that, that, that women's rights are going to be taken away or LG uh, Priya, you had mentioned specifically LGBT rights. Uh, so Brian, you know, us as progressives, we care a lot about a lot of things. We care about racial equality, you know, gender equality, um, healthcare, climate change, and and the women's rights in this movement is about all that. And LGBT rights happens to be one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and to have equality means just not by if, for example, if uh, Trump says tomorrow uh, that um, uh, equality for gay people, you know, same-sex marriage is fine. However, I am going to scrap the EPA. It, that w us as women, we, we, we can't stand for something like that because mm -hmm. we have to treat like anybody, not just Trump, but any politician. An attack on one thing that we care about is an attack, attack on, on everything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's uh, very much like a united, we stand together and divided we fall. So. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go back to the phones. Uh, let's talk to Diane calling from Monterey. Hey, Diane, you're on KGO with the leaders of the Bay Area Women's Marches and Brian Copeland. Hi. Question? I mean, I, I, I will start and tell you this. I'm a practicing Catholic, and I don't agree with the church on those two issues, and that's how I recto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I practice, I go to Mass, but I, I'm sorry. I disagree with the bad in the two issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, go ahead, Lauren. So, you know, I would say, as far as the Women's March goes, we don't have a set of agendas that people need to adhere to to participate with us. And it's, you know, the idea of human rights is a very broad mm -hmm. category. And so, you know, for example, in San Francisco, tied to our march is the West Coast Walk for Life. And we've been working with the West Coast Walk for Life. They have very different ideas of what human rights mean than many of our constituents that are coming to the Women's March. We have people who are marching in both marches. Um, there's room for everybody, and mm -hmm. I think, you know, really... It's a big tent. You're, you're trying to have a big it's tent. It's a big here. tent, and that's, you know, what's, what I've seen, what's been happening over the last year is really a dividing between us and them. Mm -hmm. And what the Women's March is changing that from me and what can I get to what can I bring. And that, to me, is like the best of America. This is about making room, having, you know, we don't have to agree in order to, ha to be able to live together and have a civil discourse. And that's not what's been happening over the last year. We have lost the ability to have civil social discourse. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to raise that bar so that, again, we don't have to agree, but we need to listen to each other. We need to understand each other and have compassion and open communication to make room for everybody. It's a big country, a lot of different ideas. We don't want to make everybody a monoculture. Mm -hmm. This is about making room for everybody's individuality and being able to do it in a grown-up, respectful way. Cel celebrating diversity is what you're talking exactly. about. And exactly. diver as well as the diversity right. of opinion. Right. Right. Okay, let's go to Paul uh, calling from Pittsburgh. Hey, Paul, welcome to KGO. Paul, are you there? Okay, I think Paul's having a different conversation. So we'll come back to Paul. We'll go to Annette uh, calling from Fremont. Hey, Annette, welcome to KGO. Hi. Yes, go ahead. Yeah.
Let me let me stop there because I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a, uh, ask the broad question that you that you were addressing to to our guest in studio, and that is how would you respond to those? And it is primarily men who, who will say this that that uh, the, the the reason for these marches is because women are threatened by a strong man, or the women are trying to tear down a strong man. I think that's straight up silly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Get off the fence. Get off the fence. I think that's straight up silly. You know, this isn't, this isn't, um, again, this isn't a competition of, like, who's stronger. You know, the rhetoric that's happened over the last year has been really the things people that have felt bullied. There have been threats Mm -hmm. of of removing people. There have been threats of of Muslim registrations. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's horrifying what, what has been thrown around. It's not like those things haven't been said. And so any marginalized group is very, very concerned. So it isn't about tearing down a strong man. It's about us raising up our voices to, to speak for what we think is right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's interesting. I'll just say this. So as a therapist, you know, I have this view. I feel like this big dysfunctional family is happening, and we got some ar- narcissistic alcoholic father who is <laughs> <to> get <laughs> inaugurated tomorrow, right? And we got half the country's in denial, and the other half needs to get in recovery. You know? I mean, that's how I see it. And so the people who are... That's people, awesome. That's a, that is an awesome... <laughs> Analogy. So the people who are paying attention, <laughs> the people who who are are concerned about other people, um, they're standing up to say, hey, you know, apathy and ignorance are the enemy. Mm-hmm. Those are the enemy. Not Donald Trump, not any political party. It's apathy and ignorance. And that's where the roots of serious harm can happen. And so this is about people feeling empowered to stand up for what they believe passionately. You know, I can't tell you the generosity of spirit the amazing passion people are bringing every day. I'm Ryan yes. Copeland here with you till four here with me in the studio. I have the leaders of the Bay Area women's marches that are they're high fiving each other in here. <laughs> and I got a feeling after that speech people are high fiving you through the radio right now too. <laughs> Renee McKenna is here. She is the San Francisco lead. Jenny Bradnini, San Jose lead, Carolyn Woodson, Oakland lead, and Priya Sen, who is the diversity chair. Eight zero eight zero eight one zero telephone number if you want to get in here in our remaining moments. And after we take care of some business, I would like to ask um, what is being done to make sure that this stays peaceful? All of that as the Brian Copeland show continues here on KGOA Channel. Okay. So, I we're going to speak to peace. We got to speak. Yeah, we got to speak to the security. Yeah. Okay. Because there's a thing come out in Oakland today about not well, to but, but but That's got to be. Yeah, we'll talk about this. Okay, Brian, what am I going to talk about? Peace ambassadors and police involvement? Yeah. How, how, yeah. how, how we've done all training. these training. Yeah. Yeah. We have all trained okay. volunteers. We have everybody on board this totally peaceful yeah. protest. We have over like what, 400 volunteers? Yeah. Okay, and yeah, then, but I also want to make sure we make a point that. So t- tell me on the air. Don't make your point now. Make your point on the air. I, you know what I always say to my guests when, you, when, you, when you're interesting off the air, you're costing me money. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> if you're interesting off the yeah. microphone, in my studio, you're, sure you're costing me money. About, this is just the way that they need to move forward. So, yeah. well, so when he asked, we didn't talk about security, this is just the beginning. Okay. Right. We've engaged a lot of people. Yeah. They want to stay engaged. And maybe we want to talk about some of the issues, like the... the, the, the okay, let's we're, 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 we're working, I would just say we've been working with all the agencies. Everybody's been really cooperative. We have how many volunteers in Oakland again? Wait, three, maybe 75. Three, counting your peace ambassador. Odds is around 400. And we are... Nonviolence. Can you guys have chips? We're just we're up. We have nearly a thousand volunteers in Oakland. Yeah. yeah. Total. Okay. And then the, the Bay Area, what? Across and the, the Bay Area. police department is cooperating, yes. and all the city agencies in every city are have been nothing but supportive. Okay. Yeah. In fact, OPD and do you want to bring up, like, we are rec- in Jamaica Judicial Council recommending that we don't, that there's no backpack. You want to go there? No right backpacks, don't no umbrellas. I wouldn't no. go. No, I wouldn't go. no one has told us they can't. I wouldn't express there. practice. Jenny, don't, don't go there because people are mad about the no backpacks. Just talk about what we found. Okay. Yeah. Don't go. I just noticed I have my shirt on inside out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 
We've got a few more comments on KGO's post, too. I don't know if we have any questions because I can't read them on here, but. Let's see what we got. Oh, someone's asking what want to leave behind the only, or maybe they mean like what do we want to take away? That's my question. Community. Community. Yeah, unity and moving forward because people have not known how to be involved politically. Like this is a. Oh, so we had 10 comments. All right, I guess it must be, must be across shares. This is like unprecedented action. You have to in seven years. All right, all right. I love what you said. Half the country is not Yeah, these are questions we already addressed. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we got one more segment, and we come back, and we'll go to about, I think, 56. Chris, what time have I got to be out? Is it just six minutes or six seconds? Uh, 56, 56 is, what, uh, oh. is what time I have to, to wait and be out, so we'll, we'll wrap up quickly. Okay. So what do you have when you leave here? Do you have, do you have more media to do? Or more I have a fundraiser. Uh -huh. I'm going to pick up volunteer shirts and sort them back and then stuff them in the mail. Like all the, like people are all, I want to help, I want to help. And then when you say, okay, can you write yeah, down yeah, to all the guys at the porta potty? Oh, yeah. great, yeah, no, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. here's the thing well, that cracks me up. Here's what's cracked me up is people say, yes, I'm going to go out and march. Oh, it's going to rain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll go unless it's, it's yeah. raining. Uh, don't, it don't melt. It's coming. You know. It's yeah. yeah. It don't melt. Yeah. Or we have the people that want to be a speaker, and they're all so gung-ho, but when they you don't can't accommodate anyone, and they're like not even going to participate. Right. Like that. Or they don't want to sign your agreement to participate. Oh, yeah. What's the agreement? It just basically says that. You're going to show up? On here. Uh, no, we have, but we, luckily we have a lot. Um, of, we have a lot of organizations that have done some grassroots organizing and bringing large contingencies for their particular organization. It's going to be amazing. And in Oakland, we have a call to rally now, and so people who can sign up as to how to go vote. Oh, I see. And they'll get notifications. Right. That's what I want to talk about on, on air. Now, can you, can you just show up? I mean, yeah. is there something you have to do? We're out here. Okay, because yeah. I, I have, to, I have oh, a couple I people that said something about I got my ticket to go. I mean, no, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, people ticket. sign up on Eventbrite, they it's into a ticket, but oh no, come yeah, on down. Yeah, yeah, no. Come on down, show up. And the reason we are doing Eventbrite is so that we can get a head count, so right. we can know things like how many porta potties we should order and things like that. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so where's the money coming from? It's, co it's all contributions. It's coming from grassroots, all right. The Bernie Sanders twenty dollars a piece kind of thing. It's really down. How much did you raise? Jen is giving a lot. Oh, give me one minute. Know, well, I don't know. Now? Well, we just had a Moscow's commercial literally just now. Ask him if he can move it into the next hour. If not, I'll do it right now. Okay. Check that out. I think I have to do it. Am I doing this now or now? Okay. Here we go. I love this song. All this dance is going on in the studio. <laughs> Ryan Copeland here with you till 4 o'clock with me in the studio. The leaders of the Bay Area Women's Marches. Uh, women's Marches taking place on Saturday the 21st in 616 cities around the world. Here in the studio is Renee McKenna, who is the San Francisco lead, Jenny Bradnini, the San Jose lead, Carolyn Woodson, the Oakland lead, and Priya Sen, who is the diversity chair. Okay, so we're talking about tens of thousands of people at the, the marches here in the Bay Area, and when you have that many people, sometimes there uh, can be a problem where you end up with things going, going sideways, or end up being violence or vandalism or, or those kinds of things. And also, there are reports of people who are supportive of Donald Trump and this administration who are actively trying to instigate problems in these marches so that they, de they degenerate into some kind of violence, in which case then Trump can say, see, law and order, this is why I needed to be here. So I'm just wondering what, what's being done to kind of guard against that. Well, I can say that we've been working with all the city agencies 
Uh, they've all been very cooperative, and we've also put out a call for volunteers. I think total between all three marches, we have about a, a close to a thousand volunteers. Wow, it's a lot, yes. And we've also offered what we ca are calling nonviolent communication training, where they can come and they've learned how to be, you know, quote unquote, a marshal, mm -hmm. and how to de-escalate situations. So we pr we're preparing them ahead of time. Um, we have the, the police department has been monitoring our numbers. They're very aware of the amount of people that are going to be. So coming. there will be a heavy police presence yes, probably at all th at all yeah. three marches absolutely. because of yeah. well, you're talking about tens of thousands yeah. of people. Okay, one of the things that, that I see, and I, you know, and I'm assuming Carolyn that you live in Oakland. Yes. Okay, and I'm sure you've seen this with with protests in Oakland. Mm -hmm. There are people who will come from other places right. who are not, who are not there f in order to protest. Uh, the, the problem that the protesters are protesting, but they're there simply to cause problems. Yeah. They're there to break windows. Yeah. They're there to, 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 to try to instigate something. So how um, is there anything that, that's being done in order to try to guard against that or just to hope that the, that the number of volunteers and the police presence will be some kind of a deterrent? Right now, it's the Oakland police, and they're going based off our numbers is how many policemen that they're going to bring in that day. Mm -hmm. um, they have enough right now uh, on hand, so if they see things going sideways, um, they will bring in more police to make sure that it remains peaceful. I want to speak to that a little bit too, just Renee, Renee and San Francisco, and we've really taken it on ourselves to be self-responsible. So as Jenny referred to, we have trained over almost a thousand peace ambassadors that we're calling them, and crowd cuddlers um, to help to be the eyes and ears, we have a chain of command. People are going to have radios. They're going to be dispersed very strategically throughout the crowd, throughout the rally, throughout mm -hmm. the marches to provide that extra layer starting from the grassroots up mm -hmm. to be able, you know, if you see something, say something, and then there's going to be a chain of command. Ending, of so course, you're policing yourselves. The, the, absolutely, the, the, we're policing the, the, ourselves. The marches are we protesting. We expect this to be a very, we're very organized people, are dedicated to the peaceful principles, starting with Martin Luther King and Gandhi, and that's really the the attitude and the in, and the um, intention that we have to be peaceful from the from the ground up on all three marches. All right, let's go back to the phones and talk to Paul calling from Pittsburgh. Hey, Paul, you're on KGO with the leaders of the Bay Area Women's Marches. Hi. Well, let, me, let me stop you, Paul. I don't. I don't understand your question. Leave something behind, like what? You know, the, the, what? Not, not clean up after. I don't understand what you mean. Okay, and, and, the, and, the interest, in the interest of time, I'm, I just want to, because we've only got about a minute, so I'm just going to ask you, are you talking about like a list of demands? What, 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 what are you talking about? All right, with that, I'll ask, what is it, and again, we've got about a minute, what is it that, that, uh, that you hope to leave behind? So I think what we hope to leave behind has already happened, that we want community, we want connection, we want unity, Absolutely. we want solidarity across the diversity that is America and, and the world. And that has already happened. It's happened in this studio right now with women who've never met each other and they're gonna be marching together across the world on January 21st. And we wanna to demonstrate to you going forward how to handle issues versus becoming bullies and going and resulting in violence. What is the uh, the, 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 the central website that uh, folks, it's, it's, it's women's march women's bay area .org. Women's march bay area .org. Okay, and you can we'll get information on all three on marches. On all three marches, and we'll yeah. put that link on the KGO website at kgoradio.com. Uh, Renee McKenna, Jenny Bradmini, Tria Sin, Carolyn Woodson, a pleasure having you on the program. And I will see one or more of you on Saturday. I'm not, uh, I'm sorry I'm not gonna make it all the way down to San Jose, okay. Jenny, but it'll either be Oakland or it'll be San Francisco, okay. or maybe both. Brian, thanks so much for having us. Thank you for having us. All right, after we take care of a little bit of business, if all goes well, as the great Jim Beeson used to say, uh, former Senator Barbara Boxer will join us live. All of that is the Brian Copeland Show. Continues here on KGO 810. Stick around.
Okay, go turn on your radio.